Luke Parnell calls himself a journeyman carver, not a master carver. He's more of a conceptual artist, where the story behind it is more important than the thing itself. For me, what's most important to me is telling stories. Um, I, love, I love creating narratives. I love finding different ways of creating narratives. Um, that's really what gets me out of bed in the morning. But not just any stories. He won't use traditional stories in his art out of a concern for cultural appropriation that first stirred in him while he was apprenticing with Henry Green. Like I remember looking at a totem pole uh, in a book that Henry was showing me and it was a Shimshan style totem pole but it had, had a watchman on the top and they were carved Shimshan style and I was like and I was like Henry this is Shimshan but those are Haida watchmen. It was done by a non-native artist and he, was, and he was like oh yeah those the non-natives can just carve whatever they want. And I just like it just that and it just stuck with me. It was just like a small moment but it stuck with me and I was like and I, I felt like I was like, I felt like okay we shared enough like they can anybody can appropriate our art now. So I decided that I would stop using traditional stories in my work after that. And so I sort of had to find other stories to tell. So I started writing stories, but then I also started using like post-contact stories like the Haida Repatriation Project as a mirror for the history of the colonialism in BC. So there was uh, 48 small carved figures inside uh, 48 plexiglass boxes. And the piece is called Phantom Limbs. So I carved these small figures and what I want to do, I, I wanted to show the transition from the museums and private collections back to Haida Gwaii. So I carved all these small figures and they're meant to represent the remains that were repatriated or the people. And even though they don't have eyes, like none of them have eyes. I used the mouth for expression and the eyebrow line because the idea is that they're sleeping or they're dreaming. He's also explored the language of cultural colonialism. I did a piece called The Violence of Words. And what I was talking about there was the difference between the English language and the visual language of Northwest Coast art. And so what I did was I did a panel that was in the shape of a Haida mortuary, the top of a Haida mortuary pole. And I did like a raven mask and I attached it to the panel and I painted on the rest of the raven's body. And then what I did was I painted over it just the words, the raven is dead, which people don't care for actually. It's not so much what the writing says, but the fact that I wrote over, the, wrote over this beautiful artwork. But the idea was I was trying to show, it's called the violence of words. I was trying to show how if you can read the visual artwork, you know what it's very specific. And back in the old days, it would have been even more specific. Like there would have been somebody inside a box, like a high-ranking matriarch or a chief, and it was very specific to the, to the visual language. Whereas the English language that I wrote over it is very vague and very general. I was sort of mostly talking about how the English language has been used to colonize our art. Like before it was ethnography and it was very sort of exotic and foreign. And it wasn't art, it was um, culture. But then people wrote about it as artwork and it became art. And so that sort of, in a way it sort of uh, colonizes and homogenizes the artwork. And I just thought about how violent that is. It's also become a symbol of the, you know, the people who colonized us. Like people around the world will look at Canada and they'll see like a totem pole, they're like, oh Canada, a totem pole. And it's like, no man, that's not Canada. Canada's the, you know, they're the ones who took our land. 